What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got huge updates, guys. This is coming on that greedy attorney general over in New York, Miss Letitia James, guys. And this may be devastating. We're seeing this one coming from directly inside of Donald Trump's circle. About as close to the source as we can get this update, guys. Coming from Trump's attorney, uh, Alina Haba, guys, coming out and doing an interview um, and speaking on New York Attorney General Letitia James and her corruption, guys, and the corruption of her case and how it should be all toppling down um, and crumbling on itself. I'm excited to check this one out and see exactly what Alina Haba has to say. I feel like she always keeps us, you know, very informed and up to date, you know, as far as Donald Trump's legal side of things go. She keeps us very informed. So we're going to get straight into the clip and I'll get my thoughts on the back end of the video, guys. So definitely stick around to the end. So you guys get my thoughts on the back end. And also, YouTube, push this video out. Definitely stick around until the end, you guys. But yo, let's get straight into it. Before we do that, though, make sure you guys hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. Root to the truth. Hop aboard for the journey. Let's get into it, y'all. What is the latest with President Trump's case? Obviously, everybody for the longest time was saying, Monday, Monday, it's going to happen, Monday. 454, four years, he's going to have to pay if he doesn't uh, seize his assets. Mm -hmm. You know, the view, we're, I can't wait. I want to see that, you know, seizing his assets and the yeah. property. I want to see all of that stuff. What is the latest? What's been happening? So we're winning. And I've always tell people, you know, this is the long game. OK, we are in a corrupt system. There's no question about it. So people love to say, look, he's going to get we're going to go over there and Tish James is going to take the keys to Trump Tower. I think uh, Whoopi Goldberg there and all of them got excited about putting a chain around Trump Tower and mm. literally were were taunting. Um, it was a really pathetic sight, actually. And. Uh, it didn't happen. Why? Because the appellate division read our papers, saw that there are reasons for a stay, saw that it absolutely is ridiculous to have somebody lose an asset while the appellate division hasn't had an opportunity to look at the injustices, look at the decision making that was so flawed. And frankly, the motivation on this case was flawed. She was motivated to bring this case before she was even in office. That's what she ran on, Miss James. So <clears throat> that in itself, selective prosecution happens to be illegal. It shouldn't happen. Um, look, they stated, it, they dropped it. They said, we're not taking assets. Everything is frozen. Not only, and this is the one thing that nobody talks about. They didn't just say you're not paying that amount of money, which by the way, is almost close to a billion dollars with a bond because you have to pay 10% more. Plus you have to pay interest. The judges said, no, we're stopping everything. You're not enforcing this. You're going to put 175 mil, which is still crazy, in a bank. But we're also not enforcing any decision against the defendants not to be able to work in New York in real estate. We're also not enforcing the decisions against Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McCarthy, people that did nothing wrong, that were working for a company and did their job and truly did nothing wrong. Nobody did. Um, and every single part of that decision from Judge and Gorin, that twisted weird decision, weird looking guy, he, mm. every single thing was put on hold, everything. Mm. While we have the opportunity now to say, this is what I was screaming about outside the courtroom steps every day, you know, so we're on hold. And, and I mean, we're on hold for an expensive price, but at least we're seeing a little bit of, you know, due process and, and sense. Uh, and how did he come up with the 175 million? I don't know. Um, I, ha I have no idea. You know, it wasn't in there. There wasn't any qualification. Yeah. Or, uh, Alina, are, are they starting to figure out that this tactic that they're using is not, it's like, it's done? It's I not going to work? We could have call they... the DNC and ask them. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand how they couldn't see that their overreaching has really hurt them because Donald Trump has always been famous. He has always been a very smart businessman, which is why I think he's a very good president. He attacks things from a business perspective, which I think some presidents and some politicians, frankly, do lack mm. that that experience. Right. Um, and because of that, they've attacked him so badly that now you've taken a billionaire and made him sympathetic because you're hurt. You're trying to hurt him. It's so obvious that now we've got people from the left, the middles. They're coming to our side and saying, mm -hmm. whoa, this is just too much. Yeah. You know, they're going to do this to me. Exactly. What am I going to do? I don't have Haba outside screaming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? And that's been my message always is, um, you know, they're doing it to him, but they'll do it to us. They'll do it to me. I'm sure they'll do it to everybody. And that's what scares me. So that's that's really it's the motivation is really not just President Trump. It's America. So let me ask you this. So this 175 mm -hmm. we're talking about, OK, it has to be in an account. Fine. He yeah. gets puts that cash. No problem. If 
if we size up the enemy of uh, President Trump as being deceptive, dark, divisive, uh, willing to do anything to eliminate him as a candidate going into 2024, November 5th, anything they can do, right, to spin the story and say, look at him now, he's part of the establishment, he's going to New York begging people for money, Wall Street, all this stuff. If, if that was the case, he's still got a few more uh, cases open. Is it, is it possible that they may come up and say, yeah, for this one, you have to pay $280 million. This one's going to be $73 million, another $128 million, another hundred and ninety. Can they keep doing this between now and October to just really deplete all of his savings? So, <laughs> look, the reality is he's an incredibly wealthy man. Um, he, his wealth, like all wealthy individuals that have intelligence, is being put to work. It's in buildings, it's in real estate, it's in hotels, it's in golf. Um, they're not, you know, whatever they're going to try and do, they forget who they're dealing with, number one. But realistically, Patrick, w what we do have in front of us is really not the civil suits. The civil suits uh, were already done. And if if you what you're asking, I believe already happened. We had the Carroll lawsuit. He got hit with an insane and that, and that was a suit that I obviously did. Um, we had already lost <clears throat> prior and we have not been heard on appeal on that first loss. This is the 83.3 million. 83.3 million. Right. That was the first one, right. which actually turns out to be 91 million when you look at it with the bond, okay, with the 10%. You have to put 10% on top. People think you put 10% into the court. Decrease. You put the entire amount plus 10% into the appellate division. So it's a number that the court gives plus 10%, plus <clears throat> the interest on the bond, plus whatever they get in fees. It's plus, plus, plus. So we already got that hit. I did that trial two weeks after uh, Letitia James' trial ended. I was on that trial for four months. The Judge and Gorin waited to put his decision until after the jury came out with Carol. So we had that happen. We had that happen. It was $91 million. And then Tish James, her original complaint, if you look, was $250 million. In the middle of the trial, towards the end, she changes it. And says, now I want more. Not because the facts were bad. Frankly, the facts were good. Deutsche Bank came, took the stand, said he was a whale of the client. We actually wanted him because we wanted his connections. Zurich still insures us. You know, all these things. The judge didn't care. Tish asked for more. He gave exactly what she wanted. There was no consideration for witnesses or facts or law. It's all crazy and How corrupt. How did come up with these So numbers? it was 91, then 375. They're out of thin air. Their <clears> own <throat> expert said, even if we looked at the what this judge is saying is an overvalue. OK, he's also saying Marilago is 18 million. Yeah. OK, so sure. If you think Marilago is worth 18 million, well, there's about a, over a billion dollars of, of over. It's ridiculous. There is no way if Marilago is 18 million, we should all buy it tomorrow mm -hmm. and flip it. And yeah. We'll all be we'll all be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it's crazy. But if you look at it that way, yeah, that was already planned, Patrick. That's what they did. They did 91. Yeah. Then they did 375. 375 becomes more like 600 million. So they were trying to take it. By the way, remember, Tish asked for his statements, asked for financials. She changed the number based on what cash he had. It's just, it's, there's zero percent question in my mind. That's what happened. So, so Lena, if you ask that, like the average person that doesn't know about law, doesn't know about all this, yeah. and they're looking at this from the outside, looking in, even left or right, and they're saying to themselves, how the hell are they getting away with this and nobody's saying anything? In, in the legal world, in government, in Congress, yeah. so, somebody should be like, all right, guys, time out. Besides, I don't care what the hell, who the person is, what are you guys doing? This is blatantly obvious that it's a tactic to try to take, like, keep them off the ballot. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but I think that. I think that we have a problem with accountability with the Democrat side, and I'm not sure we figured out how to tackle them. We have to. I think President Trump um, would make everything even Stephen when he gets back into office. I think that what we have to deal with is exactly that. We've got we can keep talking about it. I could go on TV every day and talk about how we have White House logs that came out while I was on trial. I'm sitting in the back room and I find out that there were White House logs that Tish James visited the White House. Yeah. Before and after the complaint was filed. What? How was that not on the news? If I didn't have such a loud mouth, people wouldn't hear the truth. So so I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? How is this possible? And it didn't get covered. It didn't get covered. I mean, who is that public go. info fight right now? Wanted to find out that she's yeah. visited the White House. Yeah. That, that's public. I could see. Yeah. It. Yeah.
It's crazy. So I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how do we hold them accountable? Well, these are elected officials. You know, we had people there. We have gag orders being put on us. How is that OK? Yeah. Gag they'll orders say, on say, lawyers. Yeah. Imagine I go to court. I'm your lawyer. And, you and the talk. judge says, ha, ha, but no, no, you can't talk about a couple things here. What? How about the Carroll case? The judge asked me the questions I was going to ask my client in public, in front of the media, before he took the stand, and then asked me what his answers would be. I was like, excuse me? Nobody talks about it. Yeah, Transcript. Is, ask for the trans. It's there. It's crazy. Yeah, this is judicial activism as, at its worst. Judicial activism is where the judge is sort of acting as a lobbyist on behalf right. of a political side. And in civil cases, it can run amok as long as you get a dirty judge. At least at the federal level, you know, you have federal sentencing guidelines, right? Which right. was you, that, that a sentence will be this much, might be this much, and can be extended to this much on the circumstances yeah, that, the, that, that the, uh, you know, that the, that the, the, the Basically, the AGs, first states or whatever, that are participating and remand things like to the Southern District of New York for business. And it looks terrible. And they say, OK, well, then your guidelines here, but you're going to get this. But for civil, Vinny, civil, it can run a mud. All you need is a bad, dirty judge. He puts a gag order here. He impugns a witness here. He prevents us here. He suppresses us here. And you're literally a puppet. And you feel like you're in the middle of Congress during a debate literally. for a yeah. bill rather than in the halls of justice with rules and regulations. We're, we are supposed to have, you know, the executive, the judicial and then legislative. Legislative is where we run amok until we figure it out. Judicial, we're supposed to have procedures and laws and standards and things that go in there. This didn't happen. They basically decided that the civil case, they were going to run it like a political campaign. And for everybody listening, that's what you should think about here, that the, the Trump cases were run like a political campaign by a filthy, corrupt judicial. Yeah, they happened. are politically motivated. And there were things that were done that I know were meant to make me look stupid and you know uh judges admonishing me telling me to sit down in front of a jury um the way they spoke there was nothing i was doing procedurally or in evidence rules that was wrong now the press covered it that way because the judge made them think and would say things like you should read the evidence rules and i'm looking and i'm saying well i'm trying to be an ethical lawyer here and respectful um but I can't I, you, you can't really talk back to a judge, right, especially yeah. when a judge is telling you they're going to throw you in jail, um, which happened on the Carroll case. Imagine in a civil case because I objected to a PowerPoint slide that I wanted in and he said is not coming in. The PowerPoint slide literally proved everything I had said in the case. It said that, look, if somebody tweets something and President Trump doesn't acknowledge it for five hours, but they're getting hate from trolls, how can you blame President Trump for defamation? That slide was taken out. I was not allowed to bring it in. And the jury couldn't see it. But the judge, the way they do it, he did it in front of the press. He didn't do it in chambers. He does it so that people start to have this narrative. Oh, she's not a good lawyer. Oh, she's not bright. Oh, she's not this and that. Is that yeah, the judge said he's going to throw you in jail? Yeah. Yeah, that, the, the weird guy. But, so question, Ali, was, did you guys file any motions against Letitia James for all the, all the videos and all the rhetoric of, I'm going to go after Trump? I, how is that not a conf conflict of interest to get yeah, her Rick, taken off the case? So, so her being on the case is different than Fannie Willis. Okay. So Tish James actually doesn't do the cases. Okay. She's a figurehead effectively, right? So she's got a team that we dealt with for three years, and that team tried the case. She would show up, she would sit in the back, she would have her coffee. She wasn't really trying the case. Now, she was giving the directives. She was giving the directives, much like Merrick Garland of or course. any of them, right? Yeah. But does, did we argue selective prosecution? A hundred times. Did we argue that she persecuted, prosecuted President Trump to get into office, said it before, that it was improper, that she was unethical, all those things, a hundred times. Was it covered? No. no. Just, like her at the, just like her going to the White House to visit. I, I, what I want to ask is how they come up with these numbers. Yo, huh? there we have it, guys. Coming from the PBD podcast, Lena Haba sitting down doing an interview, and she lets him know, frankly, straight up, 
They forgot who they're coming after, guys. They're coming after Donald Trump Jr., guys, and he is not one to play with. He is not the one to mess with. New York Attorney General Letitia James thought this was going to be, you know, a walk in the park. Um, you know, the easiest case, the easiest persecution of, you know, a political opponent, Donald Trump, coming after him in this civil fraud case, you know, this this sham and charade case. And like Alina Habba was, you know, exclaiming in the video, guys, she's been saying this, you know, the whole throughout the whole case, she's been trying to say that this is selective prosecution, guys. Letitia James only being able to bring about this case on Donald Trump, you know, and get in office as attorney general because of the way she campaigned on Donald Trump's name and how she was going to bring him down by any means possible, guys. And that right there is selective prosecution, guys. You can't come in or, you know, get voted in to specifically try to prosecute one person, guys, and especially not your political opponent, guys. The way she has brought about, you know, and injected her, you know, personal opinions into this case, we could tell that this was politically motivated, you know, in all efforts to drain and, you know, exhaust all of Donald Trump's campaign efforts and resources. Just by the way, you know, Letitia James and this corrupt judge had that judgment amount, you know, it kept flip flop first we've seen the 91 million dollars guys and then they were like ah that's not enough we, we feel like we're playing with a bigger fish than that so they you know increased it to you know almost three times the amount almost four times my honestly 375 i think is what it went to next 275 um and you know they seen that that wasn't enough either so they went ahead and upped the ante guys um you know delivering that half a billion dollar judgment historical judgment amount guys the appeals court seeing that seen straight through you know, this judgment and, and, you know, the verdict on Donald Trump's case saying that this is all politically motivated and this thing is gearing up to get tossed out. We're seeing that coming straight from Alina Habba. All efforts coming from that New York Attorney General, Letitia James, you know, to exhaust and deplete all of Donald Trump's re-election and campaigning resources, guys, has been for nothing. All that stuff has failed. We're seeing everyone saying it now and paying attention, guys. These cases have all brought about, you know, a bunch of attention coming from people on the left and in the middle that, you know, would never even look Donald Trump's way. Don't care about what he's got going Going on. But with the amount of political wind shots that we've seen coming, you know, Donald Trump's way and all the times that he, you know, made his way into the headlines for these cases, it's making people kind of think, stop and look and wonder what's going on with Donald Trump. Why on earth would a former president be, you know, getting so many indictments, so many cases being brought about against him, you know? Around election season, you know, everyone's starting to stop and wonder, you know, what's going on there? And when you do a little bit, it doesn't even take much to dig, a little bit of digging. You can clearly see what's going on here and why these cases are being brought about, guys. This is a political witch hunt, and they're trying to take a political candidate off that ballot. That's that's all this is. This is definitely another insightful update, you know. Lena Haba keying us in on what's going on, how things are going with that New York Attorney General, Ms. Leticia James, and that corrupt judge, Arthur Ingram, guys. It sounds like the appeals court is gearing up to toss this whole thing out, guys. Guys, definitely hop in the comment section and let me know your thoughts again you know voice melina have but it's always good to hear from her i feel like you know she always keeps us very close in on what's going on with donald trump i almost feel like i'm you know one of the legal experts too yo definitely hop in the comment section and let me know your thoughts guys also make sure you guys share this out to as many facebook friends as possible guys share the truth let's make sure you guys hit that like button it doesn't cost a thing hit that like button for your boy and also hit that subscribe button guys we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey y'all catch you guys on the next one we Yo, what's happening, Retro Fam? Are you guys looking for a way to connect through your boy Retro and the Retro Fam on a day-to-day -day basis? Look no further, guys. Memberships have now been launched where you can gain exclusive access to chat with your boy Retro and the community and gain perks, guys. Just hop in the description box below um, and check out the link for memberships, guys. You can subscribe on a monthly basis to chat and have exclusive perks with your boy Retro and the Retro community, guys. Check that out in the description box today.